Okay, I've done a lot of tier lists in the past, but one that I've never covered is a tier list on all the Resident Evil movies, including the CGI films, so that's what I'm gonna do today. With that being said, we got all the movies going in oldest to newest, and so yeah, let's just get started. The first one we will be doing is, of course, the first Resident Evil movie made by Paul W.S. Anderson. Fun fact, this movie actually came out about half a year before I was born. I'm not going to put it that high up on the list, but as of right now, I'm going to put it as an A tier rank. I did think the movie was actually really entertaining. It also had the first laser room scene that you ever see in anything Resident Evil, so I always thought that that was really cool looking back at it. Of course, Paul W.S. Anderson was trying a bunch of new things with the Resident Evil movie, but it was still really cool to see all of the classic creatures and monsters from Resident Evil, like the zombie dogs and the liquors. Also, Rain being infected here at the end of the movie was a really nice touch and a really good way to showcase just how intense the virus really is in the Resident Evil movie. Moving on from that one is the next Paul W.S. Anderson movie, Resident Evil Apocalypse, which came out in 2004, and for this one, it was always one of my favorites, so I knew when I made this that it was going to go right at the S tier rank. Resident Evil Apocalypse was truly faithful to the video game series, in my opinion, with them including Nemesis and Jill Valentine in the movie, was a really nice touch and made it very entertaining to watch. I also like all the subtle little details that they put in the movie, like showing Jill walking into the RPD and including the Golden Lugers from Code Veronica X. Jill Valentine, not only in her introduction to this movie, but throughout the entire movie, was such a badass, which is really cool to see because usually Alice is the only one that gets the spotlight in these movies. Speaking of Alice, the next one we'll be moving on to is the movie that had about a thousand Alices in it. That's right, I'm talking about Resident Evil Extinction from 2007. I actually enjoyed the movie very much, so I might actually end up putting it higher up than the B rank, but for now I'm just gonna leave it there. The movie being completely set in a rundown Las Vegas, Nevada, gave it a really cool kind of atmosphere and eerie touch to the movie that I thought stood out and was very unique. Not only that, but the introduction to the character Kmart was a really nice touch as well. Actually, as a matter of fact, I used to think Kmart was a older version of Sherry Birkin when I used to watch this movie as a kid. Also, the introduction to Claire Redfield was really awesome to see as well, because she wasn't really used as much of a prominent character in the Resident Evil video games, so it was really nice to see Paul W.S. Anderson kind of give Claire Redfield some credit here and make her look pretty badass in not only this movie, but in the future Resident Evil movies as well. And of course this was the first movie with Wesker in it who ends up becoming reoccurring. But moving on from that, coming in next we have one of my favorites, Resident Evil Degeneration from 2008. Now I don't know if this one will start stirring any controversy or anything, but I always enjoyed this one mainly because it came out at around the time that I just started getting into Resident Evil, and my first introduction to Resident Evil would have been Resident Evil 2, so having a movie like this where you get to see Claire and Leon partnering up together throughout the whole movie was actually really cool to see, so any fan of RE2, or any fan of Leon and Claire for that matter, will probably end up enjoying this movie. I knew right from the start when making this tier list that Resident Evil Degeneration was going to go up in my S tier rank. I don't think I'm going to put it above Resident Evil Apocalypse, but I might end up doing some moving around afterwards, so we'll see. This movie went on to actually portray Claire Redfield and Leon Kennedy really well in my opinion, not like some of the other future CGI films that they made, but we'll be getting to those later. So, I'm going to be putting Resident Evil Degeneration on my S tier rank, and we will be moving on to Paul W.S. Anderson's Resident Evil Afterlife from 2010. I'm putting Resident Evil Afterlife right up on the S tier rank, but remember, this is my tier list, and it is not based off of what other fans of the series think, so remember, this tier list is strictly for you to disagree or agree with what I have on my tier list. 
I'll definitely be keeping Resident Evil Degeneration up there on the S tier, but Resident Evil Apocalypse and Resident Evil Afterlife are by far my favorite Resident Evil movies ever made. I like the idea that the zombie apocalypse had been progressing and that had been going on for so long now that they had to resort to using actual coins for ammo. Also, I've always been a huge fan of Resident Evil 5, so them including the Ganado type of enemies and also the Executioner along with Chris Redfield made this a really enjoyable movie for me. I didn't exactly care so much for the 3D part of it, but I did watch it in the movie theater. It was actually my first Resident Evil movie that I have ever seen in the movie theater. With that being said, Resident Evil Afterlife has always had a special place for me, and I remember leaving that movie theater at about 8 years old being very satisfied with what I had just watched. Alright, moving on though is Resident Evil Damnation from 2012. Resident Evil Damnation I will go ahead and put in the A tier rank. I do actually like the movie a whole lot. I haven't watched it as many times as uh, most other of these Resident Evil movies actually. But for what I have seen of this movie, I actually do think that it is a really good one. It has a lot of good gory scenes, and it has a really good final fight with a super tyrant. This movie is actually the only CGI film that they did that includes Ada Wong in it, which is a huge missed opportunity because she was always a super badass character, even in the video games. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and put Resident Evil Damnation in the A tier rank. And now that I'm thinking about it, I'm actually going to move Resident Evil Extinction up to the A tier rank as well. Just because I've seen Resident Evil Extinction a lot more times than Damnation. And I do like it, so I think it deserves an A tier rank as well. Okay, moving on now, we have Resident Evil Retribution from 2012. As you can see, I eagerly placed this movie in the C tier rank, and that's saying something because I actually saw this movie in the movie theater as well. This is the first movie out of all of Paul W.S. Anderson's movies where you have to just look around and just question what's going on. He usually doesn't just throw around all of the Resident Evil characters into one movie, but this one felt like that. So now this one has the evil Jill Valentine, and it also has Ada Wong in it as well. This movie also, for the very first time in a Paul W.S. Anderson movie, features Leon Kennedy and Barry Burton. And not to give away any spoilers if there's anybody that actually wants to watch this movie and hasn't yet, but Barry Burton goes on to end up dying, which is like, what? Okay, now Barry Burton is dead? That makes no sense at all. Like I said previously with Resident Evil Extinction, I really like the atmosphere that Paul W.S. Anderson gave off in that movie with the Las Vegas, Nevada kind of desert feel, but for this movie being set in Russia just did not really come off as a good atmosphere or anything that really caught my eye as a fan. As someone who's watched all the Resident Evil movies, this one was by far my least favorite one that was made by Paul W.S. Anderson. Therefore, I will keep it in the C tier rank. But moving on from that one, we now have the final Paul W.S. Anderson movie, which is Resident Evil The Final Chapter from 2017. I put Resident Evil The Final Chapter in the B tier list, and I actually think that's a pretty good spot for it considering how I feel of the movie. See, I actually thought the movie was pretty good. It had Wesker's death scene in it, and it also had the return of the laser room, which was first featured in the first Paul W.S. Anderson movie. It also showed them returning to Raccoon City, of course way after the bomb had already hit, but it was just really cool to see the actual destruction of Raccoon City, because this was the only time we ever got to see the aftermath of it. All of those things said, I remember being very sad to know that this was going to be the final Resident Evil movie made by Paul W.S. Anderson, hinting why it was called the final chapter, but with that being said, I felt like they could have delivered a way better final conclusion to the entire Alice story. This is definitely a movie that I will be confidently leaving in the B tier list from now on. So with that being said, let's move on to the next Resident Evil movie. It is Resident Evil Vendetta from 2017. I'm gonna put Resident Evil Vendetta in the C tier rank, which I might get a lot of hate for, but maybe if you guys just hear me out, then some of my points might get through to you. 
ultimately i think resident evil death island is probably the better version of resident evil vendetta in my opinion but it was pretty cool to see some of these scenes where leon and chris kind of just group up and become a badass unit together but other than that there's definitely some scenes where this movie has some flaws. I think they definitely didn't portray Rebecca Chambers that well in Resident Evil Vendetta. And some of the scenes like that with Leon just kind of letting two cars crash into each other and killing civilians was just like kind of hard for me not to laugh at while watching this movie. And I know that's not enough to say that, oh, this movie sucks, but some things like that kind of take away some of the credibility for those movies for me. I don't know, take that with what you will, but I'm definitely gonna go ahead and put that at the C tier rank, but I will go ahead and put it above Resident Evil Retribution, so I'll keep it at the top of the C tier rank. Cause like I said, I did enjoy watching the movie, but it's got some flaws here and there. We are now at the final four, but moving on to the next one we have is Resident Evil Infinite Darkness from 2021. I actually went on to like this CGI a bit more than Resident Evil Vendetta, so I'm gonna go ahead and put it at the B tier rank. If I could pinpoint any kind of flaws that this had, I would say the biggest flaw that Infinite Darkness had was the fact that they made it a Netflix series, but it was extremely short for a Netflix series. It was like barely the length of a movie at that. So, Infinite Darkness only had one season and only had four short episodes, but other than that, the story that it provided was really interesting and I really liked the idea of filling in the gaps because this was supposed to be after Resident Evil 4, but before Resident Evil 5. And again, you're speaking to a true RE2 fan, so anything that has Leon and Claire in it working together is always something that I am going to be down to watch any day. I only actually sat through and watched it once, but for what I remember seeing, I actually enjoyed it a lot, so I am going to go ahead and keep it at the B tier rank. When it comes to the future Resident Evil films, they should just stick to doing CGI films because it seems that most of the fans seem to prefer that anyways and I can definitely say that I am one that prefers CGI films. Moving on to the next one, which is already where it belongs in the D tier rank, is Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City from 2021. I mean, it's quite obvious why I put this one in the D tier rank. I don't think there's really anything good about this movie that I could talk about. The merging in between Resident Evil's 1 and 2 and trying to put them into one movie was just one big hot mess, and don't even get me started about how they failed at casting the certain actors to play the roles of these iconic Resident Evil characters. I feel like most fans of Resident Evil will agree with me when I say that Welcome to Raccoon City was quite possibly the worst Resident Evil movie we have ever seen. But next we have another D tier contender, and that is Resident Evil's The Netflix Series from 2022. This is another one where I wouldn't be very surprised if most people agree with my D tier spot for Resident Evil's Netflix series. The way that they incorporated the Resident Evil enemies and monsters into the Netflix series was actually not bad at all on their parts. But their decision in casting Wesker was definitely a bit unique. No offense to anyone, but I don't know how they were able to pass this guy off to us and be like, yep, this is Albert Wesker, deal with it. Not only does he not look or act anything like the Albert Wesker that we know, but as far as we knew, Albert Wesker did not have any daughters whatsoever. And the strangest part about all of this is that wasn't Albert Wesker supposed to be dead anyways? The Netflix series might have had more of a chance of success if they would have just had all new characters all together instead of trying to have Wesker in it for some reason. Okay, moving on from all of that, we have Resident Evil Death Island from 2023. This one I'm actually going to put at the top of the B tier list because like I said previously, I think it's the better version of Vendetta, even though it's a follow-up of Vendetta. Resident Evil Death Island had a really cool setting, 
with it being set on Alcatraz Island. I was really intrigued when I saw that that's where it was going to be taking place. But this movie also serves as the first and only time that Leon Kennedy and Joe Valentine actually meet up and work together in anything Resident Evil. Watching Leon Kennedy, Joe Valentine, Chris Redfield, and Rebecca Chambers all team up together to take on the final boss, the same villain that had been causing them trouble since Resident Evil Vendetta, was really cool to see and it was like our version of watching the Avengers but for a Resident Evil movie. With that being said, I do know that the movie just came out last summer so if you haven't had a chance to see it yet, I highly recommend watching it as it is an ultimate fun fest of a movie to watch. But there you have it, that is my Resident Evil movie tier list. Now that we have our final results, I will go through and show you guys everything that I have. On the S tier, I have Resident Evil's Apocalypse, Afterlife, and Resident Evil Degeneration. For the A tier, I have the first ever Resident Evil movie, Resident Evil Damnation, and Resident Evil Extinction. For the B tier, I have Resident Evil Death Island, Resident Evil Final Chapter, and Resident Evil Infinite Darkness. Now going to the C tier, I have Resident Evil Vendetta, followed up with Resident Evil Retribution. Now lastly, on the D tier, I have the Resident Evil Netflix series, and lastly, Welcome to Raccoon City. So that'll go ahead and wrap up today's video. Let me know if you guys agree or disagreed with my tier list down in the comments, and make sure to like this video if you want more tier list videos in the future. These are really fun for me to make, so I definitely plan to make more regardless. Lastly, I'm not going to be including captions in all of my videos, but I decided to give it a try for this one to see if you guys liked it or not. I'll be going back to posting reverse content starting tomorrow, so stick around for that, and I'll see you guys in the next video tomorrow. Peace.